The Magnificent Seven. The Magnificent Seven Cemeteries of London. Built over a period of ten years in the mid-nineteenth century, the Magnificent Seven Cemeteries are a group of seven large private cemeteries in London, England. Before their conception, those who died were almost always buried in graveyards. Church graveyards. And then, London's population grew exponentially in the 18th and 19th centuries, overcrowding the city and its graveyards. So everybody moved to London. So they had to build all these houses to put them in. And all these graveyards to bury them in. But, um... When they were completed, none of them had any bodies in for three or four, up to seven, eight, ten years. And um, similarly with the houses were let, uh, left empty. All those big houses in Earl's Court were all left empty. And I think they were preparing for um, the workforce that was going to be coming in. I think as they dug the houses out, I think probably the early dugouts um, took a long time, but as the Industrial Revolution uh, proceeded and technology developed, they um, got the technology together and they had to get this workforce from somewhere and it certainly wasn't from the English countryside because we're we were um, a country of, of small villages and I've had a look and the largest sort of population in a, in a village was 10,000 tops, so millions of people piling into London. Only makes sense if they were coming in to dig the place out and dying in their droves and then from about roughly I reckon the 18, late 1840s, 1850, then it all took off. Uh, people started to live in the houses, landlords um, took over a lot of the tenancies of the houses in Earl's Court and other places, so so many people dropped out of um, their original agreements. And they worked the workforce to death, they had breeder mothers and they kept the kids, and once it was all up and running, they re-inhabited it. They changed, I think all of these seven private cemeteries were all really, really important places. Monasteries, cathedrals, um, that Highgate Cemetery looks like some really incredible, like, galleried temple or something set in the hillside. It was like, like Arcadia. This place must have been like Arcadia, man. And um, they've just bamboozled us. They've created um, these sort of, like, amphitheatres of death. And I've, um, so there's seven of them. Some of them are less important than others. And I thought my theory that they were all important places wasn't going to work out. But everywhere I look, it's the same thing. I, I, I can see it. I see it. I see that there was something here before, some important place. One of them is called Nunhead. Nunhead Cemetery. Here we go. This is the least talked about one. Look at that got some other things to tell you about that later. This is the one I went to. Yeah, I've got some um, other things to point out that has just come to my attention, actually, doing this. It's taken all day to do this because we've been out and we went to the pub for a pub lunch and I've come back and all I could do was think about getting back and doing this. <laughs> and everybody had too much to drink and too much to eat and because I don't drink, I don't feel too bad. But we were been out in the sun and just having a laugh and walked for quite a long way to Battersea Park. So um, I just want to get this done. And I'm doing it on the microphone and on my phone because I had to delete so much earlier. I mean, my voice has slowed through this. But I, I'm quite excited about this. I think these were like almost deliberately desecrated by being turned into places of death. It's awful death cult that we're living in and there must have been a, so much death and they had a necropolis train line so many people were dying they, they worked them to death to get this place up and running was 
a complete back-breaking awful nightmare um, the other thing that I wanted to point out about um, the uh, Brompton Cemetery was that it did have like um, a, a river running past it a small river and um, they changed it into a canal and when that didn't work out they changed it into a railway so I think they were using it to ship people in, ship stuff up, ship stuff out wasn't good enough, changed it into a canal that probably worked perfectly well, filled in the canal when they filled in a lot of the waterways in this country I think this place was waterways, uh, aqueducts um, canals and it was all and joined up together there's some fields to the north of London to the north of Highgate called conduit fields conduit fields they were called before whatever was under there was dug out we were dug out so I'll continue with the rest of the video this video a little bit differently um, I'm going to um, sort of like tell you what I think first and um, let you draw your own conclusions afterwards. This is um, Brompton Cemetery back in the day. Uh, there's a few of these engravings and illustrations around and um, it looks very similar but it also looks very different. I don't know if you're going to be able to see my cursor. I'll bring it up a little bit. I have um, my daughter from Wiltshire arriving soon so I doubt if I'll be able to do this in one go. So we have this, which he says he modelled on St. Peter's Basilica here, the architect. I think his name was Geary, and he also had a hand in Highgate, which we'll also talk about today. And then we have these walkways, and they're like colonnaded walkways, all the way around here. And they have these two bits on each halfway around the circle. And then here, and a couple of domes here, and it's slightly landscaped, and people wandering about, and got another one. This is apparently his original plan, and again, these quite large buildings here on each side so you haven't got a complete circle and the building here and this is the Norwood Road and also hills going up, lots of hills Earl's Court's behind this, Earl's Court's under this this is an early, quite an early one, I, I, I have no idea how old this is but this well predates 1840 I'd say and here it is now so as you can see the two buildings have gone from here it's a ghastly place it's much more overgrown than this photograph is showing I don't know when this was taken but the cemetery bit is packed now and it's all overgrown and everything's all rough and tumble well I've um tried making the page bigger but it won't have it so I'm going to play it from here sorry it's not a uh, full screen and hopefully it will pause when I want it to pause I'll pause it here so this is Highgate Cemetery before it started to get full up of graves and um, got overgrown because now you come in the summer you can't even see the place from the air it's just overgrown trees it's uh, another um, nature reserve people go there to walk their dogs it's just like everybody goes on about the spiritual and calm atmosphere and I tell you that Brompton Cemetery Initially, it's lovely when you go in, it's quiet, there's lots of trees. Obviously, there's loads of gravestones, but I dealt with it perfectly well until I went into the circle, and then the, oh, the, the feeling of death. It was a death, that awful 
hopeless despair feeling that you know from nightmares so if you look at this this is the Egyptian bit and this bit in here is what they call the Lebanese circle and I'll find some photographs of this for you because they said that they built these and then the roots of the trees the tree the cedar that was above it grew into it absolute complete and utter tosh I dug this thing out look at it look at it look And there they are wandering around and having a look at this uh, cemetery with its obelisks. This is the Egyptian, the way, that's actually quite interesting because that's the way into the Egyptian bit before they put all this stuff on the front. I'm surprised people have never noticed all this before, but all these graveyards, most of them have got like fame and infamy not just because of the um, Victorian architecture and the gravestones, but because so many famous people are buried there. I mean, Highgate Cemetery is like a who's who of famous people. Karl Marx is there, all these people. Same with um, Brompton. Um, they've all got like lots and lots of people and people go to look for their gravestones and have their sandwiches and walk their dogs and look at the old gravestones and they're not bothered about the architecture on the buildings. So let's look at West Norwood. This one isn't talked about much and I didn't think there was going to be much to look at. And it doesn't seem to be much to look at, but they have these catacombs. Wait till you see these. So here it is back in the day, 1840. Here's its um, set up. That's the gate going in. Looks Victorian, doesn't it? Not. It's got so good, I can barely contain myself. All right, I want you to look at this because this is the plan of the catacombs under the chapel. This is the chapel, this sort of outside bit, all this, and this is underneath. What if these weren't, what if these weren't vaults or catacombs? What if they were just buildings? That is a block, and that is a block, which you see them. So here we are underneath. Look at the brick. And when they say they had all these shelves put in <coughs> for the coffins, Basically, that's exactly what they did. Look, they're just shelves. Shelves that have been put into underground rooms. And here's the underground rooms. And these, these they are saying, were put in afterwards. These are crypts that were put in for um, the dead. Look at them. This is a coffin lift that goes up into the chapel. There it is, look at that. But look at these things, What? what is this? How the hell did they build these underground? Look at this brickwork. What the hell's going on here? This is underground, built, presumably, well, they're saying in Victorian times. Look at this. The ironwork on this door and this, these shields, they've all been rubbed back. Look at it. It has got writing, Vice Admiral. Maybe they were put in afterwards, but it shows some that are empty. All this, all this stuff here. They were just stuck in, stuck in. Look 
at the size of the rooms. This is all underground, guys. So there's alcoves within these vaulted rooms. Everybody's looking at the coffins. This is where you go in. Look at the size of them. <laughs> this is a private vault in the central aisle. Yeah. It's been there a few years, I reckon. Here we go. The bays in this side aisle are unused. Here they are empty. No shells, no coffins, no added crypts. These were supp uh, supposedly built in the Victorian times when they set this place up. I call bollocks on this. I call bollocks on it. So I thought I'd have a look at another one. So I found um, Tower Hamlets. Tower Hamlets is quite a, a plain old thing. It's a bit of a plain old cemetery. And I thought, well, my theory falls dead here, I guess. This is the end of the line. And then I realized that St. Clement's Hospital was on the north side, I think. It's um, part of the actual cemetery. So St. Clement's Hospital. Opened in 1849 as the City of London Union Workhouse. In 1874 it was converted into an infirmary for the same union. Mental patients came here, blah, 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 blah. Was a workhouse, became a mental hospital. And here it is. For some reason they've painted the front entrance. I'm going to bring this up for you. It's a hint, if you press control and the plus sign... You can get these photographs up. They've tarted up the front and they say it's horribly garish, ghastly colours. And here's our building. So, yet again, all this brick and arches, brick and arches, all filled in. Lots of stone, underground. Fantastic gates. St. Clement's Hospital, there it is. Closed in the 60s again. Lottery funded now, they're going to do it up. That's the plan they're thinking of doing of a place. All of these places now have lottery funding to do them up. They're looking at £62 million to do up the Brompton Cemetery. And that's how this hospital used to look. Right, so here we are back at Highgate and um, this is looking down into the circle of Lebanon I was nearly right I called it the Lebanese circle I have to take in quite, quite a lot of information <laughs> when I get things mixed up I am slightly dyslexic I, I visualize words when I spell them right so this is inside the Lebanese circle And I've got quite a good photograph here showing it. I think that's quite an old photograph showing it looking quite plain, but it's in use, the family vault. And up on the top of here is a cedar tree. Here it is from the outside. And they added to these, put these strange things on, appendages. This is the Egyptian bit at the front. And in that um, little bit of film, this bit was still plain. And these weren't here. This is all nonsense this is just all nonsense to cover up the simple and fine lines behind them there it is again and 
then I found this picture of the same place. This is a good one. Oh, well, not that one. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, look. So you can see here the brick underneath. And that's what they put on. It's just like plaster. Plaster put on thick because they were into Egypt. All the brick here underneath. They were really into Egypt, weren't they, back then? So they tarted it all up, put some like little Egyptian bits on. <sighs> so, Nunhead Cemetery, the least talked about Nunhead. So, what have we got at Nunhead Cemetery? This is where I had a bit of an epiphany. So here it is. Oh, this is obviously some fantastic old building here. Absolutely wonderful, but some architect is given the credit for doing this one as well. And it's so spacious, they have concerts and things in it. Here, look. And this here. Nenhead Cemetery. Nunhead Cemetery. Now let's find that other one I was looking at because I had a realisation. Where is it? Well, it doesn't matter because I can show you any of them. This is quite a good one, I think. I think most of the statuary in these places is actually from um, buildings from cathedrals. I think all this stuff. Look at it. Look at it. I did notice one in the um, Brompton graveyard. Look at them. And look at them. These stands were probably made, but who knows, maybe these are just some recycled old buildings, our grave stones. Here, Look, recycled from old churches. That's what they do, and I think some of those crypt buildings are as well. Yeah, this is the Allen Monument in Nunhead. This comes up really big. I think all this is old architecture, all of this, all of this here. Maybe even this up here, and all this stuck on. But look how it comes up really big. It did earlier. Here we go. Come up big. Oh, I love it when they come up big like this. You can really get in. Look at all this. Look at that on the steps. And here it's all nacquered. Obviously goes down. The grids there. Brick. Yeah. High gates the same. They're all the same. They've all got these um, crosses and obelisks and um, basically finials from the tops of cathedrals for their statuary. Probably a lot of the statues as well came from these um, from the old buildings. So the cemeteries were taking over important um, locations that had important buildings on, turning them into cathedrals of death and using the statuary from the old um, buildings and this is quite a nice one, isn't it? So I'm going to wind up the video now. But, yeah, I don't mean I don't think every gravestone in um, the graveyard is part of a recycled building, but I think quite a few are. And the thing is, these are energy devices from churches. And it's almost like 
subverting their original use or something by putting them into these places. So this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. This is Nun Head Cemetery and this is what Wiki says about that. <sighs> it was consecrated in 1840. They were all opened in 18... They were all... It was like they had to be opened in 1840-41. Consecrated in 1840 with an Anglican chapel designed by Thomas Little. And that's all you get. That's all you get. And then they just launch off into... Um, lists of who's there, you know. 52 acres, oh my god, it's even bigger. Views across London include St Paul's Cathedral. Wow, so it's high up. Incredible. The Victorian part of the cemetery is currently in a sport, the poor state of repair. Best being described as an elegant wilderness. Hmm. Yep. So the architecture there is just sort of like shrugged off. So yeah, all of this stuff could have come from old buildings, you don't know, do you? Anyway, I'm going to call it a day there because um, I, this is way too long and I might actually cut quite a bit out. So thank you for watching. Please comment, 